The rain hammered a relentless rhythm against the attic window, the wind howling like a banshee outside. Inside, huddled beneath a dusty sheet, Sarah and her best friend, Emily, were playing Charlie Charlie, the internet craze that promised to connect with a spirit named Charlie. Their makeshift board lay on the creaky floorboards, a sheet of paper with a large X drawn on it the quadrants labelled yes, no, maybe, and goodbye. Two pencils, balanced precariously at the centre, formed a cross. The air was thick with anticipation, tinged with a healthy dose of scepticism. Charlie, Charlie, are you there? Sarah whispered, her voice barely audible over the storm. Silence. A few ten seconds dragged by. Then, with a sudden gust of wind that rattled the window, the top pencil spun wildly. It landed, impossibly balanced, pointing directly at, yes. A jolt of nervous laughter escaped both girls. Sarah swallowed, her heart hammering in her chest. Maybe it was just the wind? She offered, but her voice lacked conviction. Driven by a morbid curiosity, they continued. Charlie, Charlie, can you tell us your name? The bottom pencil twitched, then slowly rotated, stopping at maybe. This wasn't a coincidence anymore. A chill snaked down Sarah's spine. Was Charlie a boy or a girl? Sad or happy? Alive or dead? The questions escalated, each answer fueling their fear. The final straw came when they asked, Charlie, Charlie, do you want to play with us? Both pencils spun with an unnatural speed, landing in a perfect, chilling alignment, pointing directly at... Yes. The air in the attic grew heavy, the temperature dropping several degrees. A cold wind seemed to emanate from the makeshift board itself. Panicked, Sarah lunged for the pencils, knocking the boards askew. In the dim light, they both saw it. A faint swirling mist rising from the paper, taking on a vaguely humanoid shape. Their screams were drowned out by the sudden deafening crack of thunder. The lights flickered and died, plunging the attic into darkness. Panic surged through them. They fumbled for their phones, desperately trying to find their way out of the labyrinthine attic. Sarah trips over something soft, a sickening feeling dawning on her as her hand brushed against cold, clammy skin. A rasping, inhuman whisper echoed in the darkness. You can't leave now. We've only just begun to play. The following days were a blur of terrified confusion. Sleep was a distant memory, replaced by nightmares filled with swirling mist and disembodied voices. At school, Sarah and Emily went through the motions, but their eyes held a haunted look, their laughter replaced by nervous ticks. They tried to talk about it, to confess their folly, but the words wouldn't come. A suffocating fear held them captive, a fear that something unseen, something malevolent was watching them. The strange occurrences began subtly. Objects would move on their own, doors would creak open with no explanation. Whispers seemed to brush past their ears. One night, Sarah awoke to an unearthly scratching sound coming from beneath her bed. Holding her breath, she reached for her phone and flicked on the flashlight. There, etched onto the dusty floorboards, was a single word scrawled in a language she didn't recognize. The word is goodbye. Terror turned to a desperate resolve. They had to break whatever connection they'd made. Researching forgotten corners of the internet, they stumbled upon obscure rituals for severing spirit bonds. 
armed with salt, sage, and whispered incantations, they returned to the attic. The air crackled with a malevolent energy as they performed the ritual. The room grew colder, shadows danced on the walls, and the swirling mist reappeared. This time, however, it writhed in anger, the whispers morphing into guttural growls. As they finished the ritual, a deafening screech filled the room. The mist dissipated, leaving behind a faint sulfurous odour. Sarah and Emily clung to each other, trembling. Had it worked? The days that followed held their breath. The strange occurrences stopped. A semblance of normalcy returned, though the experience left an indelible mark on them. They never spoke of Charlie Charlie again, a silent pact of denial to keep the terror at bay. Years passed. Sarah, now a successful journalist, received a call from a frantic young woman. The girl was talking about a game, a spirit named Charlie. A cold dread washed over Sarah. History was repeating itself. Taking a deep breath, she steeled herself. This time, she wouldn't be a scared teenager. This time, she would fight back. The ending, though uncertain, 